There we go. And we'll just give people a few minutes to join in. It looks like there's quite a few people who weren't CAs or VCAs. We're dropping in. Um, so this room is really to just talk about our first Café Sur Le Pont, which starts on October 16th. Um, and we'll have a, a focus on governance and what that looks like around handing that over from IOG to the community. Um, Felix, do you want to add any color or context for the room today? Yeah, because I think Voltaire is coming. And one of the main goals also what we saw by, for example, what Dorf wrote from IOG side to the Catalyst Circle is exactly addressing those topics. But we think that this efforts and this engagement have to come from two sides. So also to come together as community and to say, hey, what is the community actually able, willing, possible to do in this regard? And so these calls are definitely made for the community to align already to say, oh, okay, how could the very first move in this direction look like? And how can we support IOG in this regard? They don't have to come with a given deal and to say, hey, guys, here, yeah, do this, 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 when the time is there. So also to give the community a possibility to say, hey, hey, IOG, look, we have this and that. Would it be helpful? So, yeah. And the, the name of the event is Café Sur Le Pont, which is, it's meant to be cafe style, not like a formal event or a dialogue. It's really kind of just a conversation between the community and members of IOG, but they'll be coming as community members and not in any official capacity. And I mean, they could be stating things like that, but it's really just to have a conversation as people and community and kind of make sure we understand each other and talk about the issues or challenges or bring things up or things that we're really passionate about that we think everyone should know about. Um, so it's really to have it. Um, Dor, do you want to jump in? Yeah, just a request, because I am I probably won't make it on, on, on the session, but uh, it would be great to somehow capture the conversation in a way that is digestible like uh, it will be hard for me like for example like if for example if i want to like hear and and get inspired by ideas that are expressed uh, you know watching a three-hour video is probably not <laughs> gonna work for me like I, I and also for a lot of people in iog like i, th I think part of the I would love if if part of the thinking around the event could also be like okay so we had a conversation interesting ideas were expressed, interesting points, like what's the one pager that we come out of, of this conversation? What are the most important insights? What are the most important challenges? What are the most important like uh, things that that uh, you can communicate back to us so we can quickly be able to read it and actually learn from it and that and improve the communication so um and improve the process so that's that's just my request i think it would really help a lot i think we can definitely do that um this event is being put on by a new kind of group that's forming called bridge builders and that's a function that we can definitely take on as a group to summarize and create a one pager i think that would be super helpful not just for iog but for people who couldn't attend because I agree, watching a three-hour video is probably too much for most people. Um, and if, I don't know, if TiVo shows up, maybe we'll have a Miro board um, of the conversation as it happens in real time. And uh, Nick, you have your hand up. Yeah, I'm curious to know more about the bridge builders and maybe how to get involved. Um, because governance is my background and there's a lot of research around it. And so it's what's drawing me here to the Cardano community. And um, yeah, just looking for more ways to get involved in those early stages. Sure. Um, we haven't formally launched it yet. It's right now it's Felix and myself and we're working on a, a website and kind of the concept and kind of trialing the waters with this event. Um, but definitely be in touch. We'll have a more formal kind of announcement of how to participate and um, what we're about pretty soon, um, maybe next week even. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Felix, on how people no. can participate. 
<laughs> by being bridge builders like everything else how to be a proposer by being a proposer how to become a ca by being a ca yeah exactly the same great yeah so um if you want to jump in soon just get in touch with um, felix or myself and um we can guide you to the right places once we have them established we'll also be announcing it at town hall i'm sure okay great thank you mm -hmm. and also to come back to what Dor said so this is exactly what it is about so we can say this for example here we can see as a very first draft already we have people from the community we have people from iot and it's difficult to explore a ground where open conversation can happen and from both sides for example say okay what is requested that a effective effective conversation can happen so cafe solar point has really a uh, cafe solar point has really also the ambition to create the overall environment on which effective and functional structure can take place so therefore yes we need the input from both sides from every side to see oh, okay or do we need to develop and evolve this? Will there be uh, other times, like you have the Eastern Town Hall and Western Town Hall, just because I think this is like three in the morning for me, uh, this cafe. So you have to get a really early coffee. <laughs> Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the, the quadruple espresso. That. <laughs> yes. I think um, as we grow and uh, mature as a group to do these events, and if we get enough bridge builders in the Eastern Hemisphere, maybe we can meet and bring people in from, because I know there's IOG people in Hong Kong and Japan and other places possibly that we can pull into the conversation. Um, or find a different time. Uh, so that's definitely something that's possible in the future if we get enough interest. George. Hey, who? Um, yeah, I was just wondering, because Voltaire realistically is going to be what later next year. So using Voltaire's infrastructure is going to be uh, delayed. So I guess some, is some of the idea here that we'll be making some kind of interim solutions, maybe expanding on what's being looked at with this catalyst circle V2 kind of thing. I don't know what the, I'm guessing that that kind of process will be open source and the, anything technical will be open source for that. So I guess there could be some interim kind of things we use and build upon to have some processes that do these kind of smaller term democratic kind of systems. Is that, is that somewhat the intention or is it more kind of hypothetical kind of talking about what we could possibly do? Like, is there any, in terms of that direction, what is there any preference? I think the initial preference is to have the conversation and not necessarily come together to make decisions. We just want to make sure that everyone's voices are heard and ideas are expressed so that we can go away and actually make things happen. But I don't think the cafe is the right place to be making decisions, at least not in the beginning. You know, I think there's a lot of constituents that need to come together to talk and start to break down some silos. Uh, my vision is in the future, Cardano Foundation can come, Emergo can come, other people, the DCF or other things that are happening in the community, just so that we as a community can talk to all these different pieces and build those bridges and make sure that everyone is kind of communicating things back and forth. Philip, you have your hand up. Hey, Nori, thank you. Well, I, uh, I've been thinking about uh, th this lately and I have a question maybe for everybody to, to pitch in. My, my view currently of Catalyst, let's say, or, or even Cardano, right, is it, it is a plutocratic system, which means, you know, one eight of one vote and, you know, and uh, I, I just want to, ask is is this fine i mean do we do we accept this as a fact of life not only in blockchain crypto just in general like if we look at governance systems everywhere it's basically plutocratic right we maybe sometimes mask it as a democracy but in the end it's heavily influenced by money and uh, do we just accept that and work with that? Or do we try, because I've seen a proposal from, I think, Kendrick 
where there was quadratic voting. I, I watched the Cardano live podcast. I'm not sure if anyone's here from there. So I, you know, do we do we even try to to have some sort of a, you know, and let's let's put the technical things on the side. Let's say let's say hypothetically that we can do it. Let's say we have beautiful identity and we have things like that. But do we even try it, or do we just take it as like a fact of life that plutocracy is going to be there, and we just you know we just keep aligning our system according to to plutocratic principles? I think I have an interesting uh, perspective on that, uh, and I definitely want to hear from Dor. Um, one thing I, I I think that they've chosen an interesting way of voting where, if people have a lot of ADA and there's ADA being produced. And, and people are accumulating ADA, it makes sense for, for them to be incentivized to pick projects that are gonna benefit the ecosystem, right? But I do see a point in the future when we've, we've minted all of the ADA that's ever going to be produced, where you could end up in a situation where you have large holders who can effectively just stake and stay rich and stay powerful forever. And literally like the system is, is built so that that's very possible, right? You could just stake 20 million ADA and it doesn't, and, and have the power to keep, keep the power. Um, but I think we're not there yet. And so maybe we do need to look at a transition at some point, um, but things are working. It seems like they're working well now. I don't know. I, I, it seems like while we're on the way up and while we're minting, I think there's probably a different set of incentives because there's ADA being produced and there's new large pools being produced and, and things like that. I don't know. Also, just I before, or I, I didn't mean to say like this plutocratic system is bad or good. It was just an open question. I, I don't know. I'm not sure myself. That's why I'm asking everybody. Yeah, Dora. Yeah, I mean, it's well, so I think the first assumption, like, there's like a bunch of assumptions in that statement, but I think the first assumption is that <laughs> there's like a lot of people who want a plutocratic system or something like that. And this is like some kind of, uh, you know, it's kind of like working against the stream to want something else. But I think, uh, you know, if you ask me personally, or if you ask Charles, or if you ask anybody, okay, I think in IO and uh, nobody wants that nobody sets the goal for that nobody sits in like oh this is how it's you know this is how we want world governance to work so rich people have lots of power and they decide like it's actually that's actually not true and uh, there's like you know i sit in a, countless meetings and we're, we're you know trying to figure these things out and 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 figure out ways to resolve it and the truth is, is that any any type of governance, any type of novel type of governance, um, needs to needs to develop legitimacy over time, okay, to become an alternative. And also, um, currently, at least, at, at the best of my knowledge, okay, maybe maybe someone here in the room has a a quick fix okay but but we we don't we're not at at the time that we can use any sort of uh, alternative voting model uh to um that that can't be like civil attacked okay so so definitely identity like the idea to, to validate your identity is is a pathway forward definitely you know we're gonna start when we can, okay, when, when feasible, you know, we're gonna start experiments, you know, where there's different decision making mechanisms and, and, and different allocations of voting power and influence would be possible. Um, I think it's more of a question of, for, for me, like personally, it was more of a question of do we wait in the sideline and wait for these perfect conditions to arrive and only then start to experiment or we take what we currently have okay which is like it's like ada based voting and leverage it you know to start to build legitimacy for even even like introducing the concept that 
uh, you know, a bunch like like tens of thousands of people can make joint joint decisions together effectively. So uh, you know, it's not ideal, but uh, you know, this is what we have. This is the reality we have. Um, just know that. Uh, just know that that um, definitely pro, um, you know, even with this like stuff like rapid funding mechanisms, okay, like we can already start to launch uh, large scale projects where we can see we can see if there's like decision making specific decision making processes that are very effective at producing outcomes. And if we can see, if we can prove that uh, um, we figured out a mechanism that's more effective, then it's not a matter of ideology. Okay, it's, 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 it, it transcends ideology. It not becomes a question of like, I believe in in this form of governance. Or I believe in that form of governance. It's just going to become a an inevitable truth. Okay, that just like going to become the new norm over time, simply because groups that are making better decisions are going to flourish and are going to outcompete any other group okay and it, and it doesn't matter if <laughs> unfortunately you know like the unfortunate thing it, 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 it's not gonna matter if it's more moral or less moral you know it's it's gonna be about what's what's more effective of course uh being uh, attractive like a system that is perceived as fair a system that's engaging um is going to have more more chances to succeed i think because it because people are going to believe in it and be engaged with it um so i would say like you can do both you know you can like like ultimately you can concede the fact that currently this is the best thing we've got but also start to figure out you know how can we actually uh transition in a let's say a controlled way you know in 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 a, in a observable truth way that people can really see that there's alternatives and it's undeniable that are better um that would be like an amazing amazing outcome let's say like next year in catalyst like in, in activities of catalyst if 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 we manage to get there easy thanks Dor. Um, George and then Johnny. Yeah, I don't. I don't really see necessarily plutocracy kind of thing fading away immediately in any kind of immediate sense. But I do see like us getting like a Swiss Army knife of potential new options. I know uh, reputation something that's been coming in Catalyst Circle, and we've kind of hosted a few kind of sessions on that, talking about that already. I've been spending a lot of time on that in the last week, actually. So that's something I'm hopefully going to present some ideas on. But I imagine what will happen is we can have there's going to be different levels of kind of democracy one that's just really high level big decisions which is like challenges and who you vote for but then you could have you know smaller kind of governments that are just literally talking about how do we manage this documentation or something that's really important to the community but is very distributed and if we can have things like reputation kind of tools for instance as one one example that i can prove i have this kind of skill level or reputation based on these contributions then you can kind of integrate them as, a, as, as just the governance thing or a weighted thing. So it could be like 30% of the voting kind of power comes from like a reputation kind of thing, or it's, and then the rest of it's plutocracy. And I think it's gonna to come to this kind of AB kind of testing. I mean, we're gonna need some data science to kind of look at the history of trialing these kind of things. So I don't think there is any kind of easy yes answer. And similar with the quadratic voting, I think that has a massive kind of potential for things like public goods, where you know, you want to, you've got proof of identity, but then you really wanna maximize what is the, the the largest amount of the population want from this kind of outcome. And it's, it, it's a public good focused challenge, for instance, whereas a like a developer ecosystem challenge could be much more focused on, does this person, is it's meritocracy, so they have the right skill levels to complete a really high skill level thing that needs to be done to do the protocol. Or, you know, when Cardano kind of pushes its blueprints onto the protocol, meritocracy and skill becomes a really important part for who does those kind of things. Whereas public goods and events and things that don't require the same skill level could be really good for some quadratic voting and kind of spreading these different tool sets. So I, I kind of see as this eventually when the Tyler Prison comes out, like that's the thing I really want to attack is like, how can we kind of start to assess and add some reputation dynamics that we can introduce to things that are low risk to prove things out and then kind of push this up the chain of 
changing how we kind of govern each part. But I think yeah, it's, it's going to take a lot of time, but there's a lot of different ideas that will come out, I think, over the next few months, basically. And that's, that's me. Thanks, George. Johnny, you had your hand up. Yeah, I, I think the other thing too is, you know, we hear, um, I don't know, there's, I think about the, the existential threat too of, of um, you know, the, the, the incentive system somehow, but, you know, at the end of the day, I, I, um, I think the, the thing I love the most about Catalyst is so far has been this iterative approach. Right. And it's just not all at once. It's each fund. It's scaling up. And, you know, I really respect the team for taking really looking at the data, really analyzing the activity of the wallets and the participation. And, and you know, I think we worry about the existential threat or the potential day of reckoning. But, you know, you also have to just look at the data and see if, um, you know, where the the the, the value the, the chips are falling and if and if it's in line with I guess what we would consider uh, good outcomes or return on intent and I think the other thing too is you know I, I love that you know through this we actually it doesn't necessarily imply that there will be um, you know the value system that we have within the Cardano community uh you know is is it, i think we've done a pretty good job of attracting people that have a certain you know notion of community value and civic responsibility and communal effort right and it isn't just about you know the pure financial economic vision of um you know economic self-interest right i think there is a uh, a notion of you know people that care about values that aren't purely based on ADA or fiat, and so I think that's uh, you know we got to be open to that possibility as well. Thanks, John. Tivo, you have your hand up. Yeah, one thing I would like to mention that having this kind of uh, similar ongoing same method over and over again kind of makes us uh, all the people who are here like thinking why don't we use this method or why we don't use this moting solution and and the way the catalyst presents and like helps to promote that hey your idea is great do it and and it kind of incentivize and gives us the gives us the opportunity to create these small little experiments ourselves in like safe environment before we go and crank it up. Okay, here is identity. And now that suddenly, because if, if you make this, like I have my own experience with that, that we create the identity and we hand it out and some people, I also registered that I didn't get the identity, like you didn't have a proof of life, you weren't there. And like it gets so complicated and it's so like, how are you social or like, like a, a bit more complicated than it seems from uh, like from afar. So I, I, the main thing I wanted to change, say is that I think it thanks to the catalyst, we have the opportunity to talk about these things and play around with these experiments in safe environment, which is this place. And with something like this is successful, my hope and what I have seen is that the Catalyst team notices it and puts more power and emphasis on, on these successes. And sometimes they pull also these great ideas into Catalyst system. For example, when we had this red and yellow flag, which is like, the very first thing what I noticed, people came up, very big discussion came out of it, and, and then it happened. It was in next fund. It was like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, that, that, that's it. I'm going to lower my hand. Thanks, Tivo. Uh, Yoram, and then Charlie. Yeah, in continuous to what Tivo said, actually, we can do a nice uh, test, right? I mean, we can actually compare the results based on wallets and compare the results based on the coin system. We can already do that and actually have kind of an estimation if there is much difference as results if we compare it based on wallets and based on 
on, on the coin system, right? That's something that we can already do. So as Steve said, I mean, we can do a lot of trials and maybe this is something to do already after this fund or for the previous fund. And we will have some indication how far we are with the two different uh, models from each other. That will be interesting to know, I think. So that's it, because so it's, it's something that definitely should be very highly considered and important. Because if someone have 90 million ADAs, I mean, so then these votes are the only one that counts or mostly counts. And there's some big accounts like that, but yeah, let's do this test. Let's do, let's do these checks. That's my suggestions. And it might be a next proposal for the next fund. Or even I'm happy to do it just to do it. I mean, if I can if do somehow, if, it, if there's a way to get the data on that, I'm happy just to do it and that's it. Yeah, that would be really interesting. And we do have that ability here, right? So I think that would be a great experiment. Yeah. Charlie, um, and then Philip. Yeah, thanks, Noreen. Good to see you. Um, so yeah, this is really great um, ideas. I guess one of the things that strikes me is that um, there is no, um, there's nothing more efficient than a centralized government in terms of getting things done in the short term. In the long term, it can't last. But in terms of accomplishing great things, sort of this executive pressure. And what's interesting with uh, a lot of the government structures now is you have um, structured competing interests. It's interesting how there are as, as pointed out in the chat, um, technocracies, meritocracies, um, you know, sociocracies, there are a lot of different competing interests based on, um, I guess you could look at it as different dimensions of power, um, money being certainly one of them. If these are quantifiable, um, whether they be, uh, like you have a YouTuber um, who has a particular high level of social power, they might not be wealthy in a monetary way, but the power they wield, wield socially is quite um, quite large. If that can be quantified, well, then certainly that can be accommodated. Um, likewise, there are certain people who have incredibly high technical ability who, you know, we've talked in the CA circles about, um, about how there's such a need for, for those people to be proposers, but then we also need people to be able to review them. So you see this sort of power play um, happening in other realms. Well, if we have a way of quantifying that, and again, this all comes back to the identity. I'm really just validating what, what you have all said so far. Um, but I would be really excited to see um, quantifiable realms of power um, all implemented and perhaps even pitted against each other in a way that balances um, that just some just some musings I've had off of what you guys have said. So thanks, Charlie. Uh, Philip, and then Felix had his hand up. You took it down again. If you want to speak, you can go after Phil. Uh, yeah, I think Charlie said a couple of things that I wanted to say. Um, also, someone wrote in the comments, I'm afraid we all think too much alike to have meaning representations. So please bear with me if I'm a little bit contrarian. It's nothing against anybody here. You know, I'm just trying to look at it from a different angle. That's all. That's all. No, Philip, I'm the one that wrote that. Okay, yeah. Well, that makes, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so are there, like, like Charlie just said, reputation will always have uh, something that is like socially, like, you know, it's our personal identity is one thing, but reputation is a totally another thing. A reputation of door is how I and all the rest of us perceive door. A reputation of Philip is how you guys perceive Philip. Has nothing to do with me. I, I have no control over it. Okay, I can act in a way, I can try to manipulate whatever, but it's, ex, it's, from out it's coming from outside and it's extremely dynamic so i think honestly to to attempt to quantify that it's not going to happen in a year or two years or five years i think it needs something revolutionary to quantify someone's reputation right and even if we do quantify it how do you put it in a because let's let's think about any governance system we have any voting system we have whatever humans first issue is they need to interact there's 35 of us in this room and we are all, you know, active as much as we can be. We want to scale this to 35 million, to 1 billion, to 3 billion, right? 
as far as I know, there was no system in history that had like 95, 97, 99 percent of people going out to a vote. I don't know about that. That that is a problem. I think that's a huge problem in and of itself. If you have five people voting, uh, five percent of people voting, then those five people, five percent of people made make the decisions. And how do you how do you uh, how do you make the rest think about the problems themselves? It's overwhelming and it's a huge scale. So, and then of course, what do we put in? We put in representative democracy. Okay, great. It's it's you know a solution. But then you know, if I'm very popular and everybody delegates their vote to me, then again I'm voting with one billion ADA. And then maybe Johnny is willing to pay me, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars to pass something for him, right? So we're getting back to the same problem. And it's just, it's it's difficult for me to even think about a possible solution. That's all. Definitely good things to think about. Thanks for sharing. Um, we have a queue. Did you want to jump in, Felix? I know you had your hand up. Okay. Um, we can go to Nick and then Ken after that. Yeah, I think um, uh, one of the big things we have to, to start with is really involving all the stakeholders. I think we're still such a niche environment that we're going to get very limited perspectives. And there is ways to measure that. And like I said, there's a lot of research out there. That's what my proposal, Cardano Community Campus, is all about, is using the sociological and psychological research on how to build communities um, through archetypes. And it's a way to understand if we have a holistic community, a holistic environment in which to actually gather all the right information to make these decisions. I think we jump right into voting and that's like the big kind of pain point. But um, I think before we even really can handle that properly, we have to ensure that we have all the right players involved on the, on the team and in the community in order to um, find the way forward. Because I think there's a lot of solutions. And I think like Charles said, you know, we're going to have centralized and decentralized. There are phases where you need one versus the other. And I think moving out of this, like either or world, like it has to be either this or that and understanding that when we say both and we can see that certain times and certain phases of businesses or certain phases of projects and things like that need different types of structures. And so um, I, I really want to focus on like, let's gather the human capital in the right environment and in a more emerging space, not just iterative. Emerging meaning we actually create a space where things can come through um, in this effort of like play and making mistakes and curiosity and imagination, because I think that's where the blue oceans are gonna be for us. Um, because if we always come at it from this perspective of there's a problem, we need to fix it. You're coming at it from a little bit of a narrow perspective. But if you actually take the time to nourish the right environment, uh, I mean, it's just like an organic farmer. If you, you tend to the soil, you know, and then the soil grows and grows the vegetables. So I think everyone has like very valid points, but I think we're really not going to get closer to the solution until we know how to build community in a holistic manner. And, and for me, that's, that's involved in archetypes which allow us curiosity and exploring you know like which archetypal roles we dominate in which ones are needed to build a whole community um, how these different archetypes actually interact with each other um, where the friction points are and then at the base level provide a way to uh, address conflict as a way forward and not as a separation or this yeah long drawn out like you know stalemate kind of thing and so if we have an environment that is co-innovative and is curious and allows us this ability to get to know each other and why each of these different facets are needed in the community. And we have ways to take conflict, not as a disruption, but as a way forward, then that will provide us the right environment in order to find these solutions. And I think we have to start there um, before because I think all, you know, we can talk about the voting and yeah, different situations need different things. I've been in projects that do great in sociocracy and some that need more centralized stuff um, or more representative stuff. So 
Uh, I think there's, like Charles said, it's going to be a both and world. And um, I'd like to really just focus on this environment. How do we create this right environment? Awesome. Thanks, Nick. Um, Ken and then Tom. Um, I, yeah, I like some of the things that, that Nick was just talking about. Um, one of the things I wanted to say was, um, it's important that you have, like, if you just have one, one system, then everybody's stuck using that system. Um, the, the freedom to, to leave or to choose a different um, way of doing things is important. Um, Catalyst is just one system. And with Cardano, it's possible to build whatever other voting system you want to build on it. Um, I don't know, I think if you were to, to look at it like the way that, that people choose a stake pool, it's sort of a form of, of voting for which pool you think is the one that you, that you align with best. Um, if some mechanism like that was in Catalyst, that would allow people to, to experiment with different systems all within one overarching system. Um, that might be an interesting thing to do. Um, it's also important to, to note that when you're voting with your ADA, there are some things that like, like with but voting for things that, that have to do with the, the integrity of, of the, the blockchain for storing value, that's something where maybe people who have a lot of data would possibly have a, a better interest in, in ma maintaining that. It might also have to do with um, like how long or people have had their their money in ADA too, because I can think of situations where someone might um, put their money onto Cardano platform just so that they can vote for something that's not good for the network or something like that. Um, but yeah, I again, I agree with some of the things that Nick was saying about having the ability to let things emerge from, from different experiments and giving people the ability to, to interact with these different experiments and see what works better than what else. Thanks, Ken. Oh. Great to hear from you and then TiVo. Yeah, so just uh, uh, just my two cents there that um, uh, I, I like that conversation. I like that, that this question because uh, we should just assume that corruption will occur. We should just assume that the, a system, no matter how successful, will eventually collapse um, from its own weight. And the, the benefit of uh, Cardano or any type of uh, a project like this is that the keys to rebuild something new are publicly available and always being innovated on. So um, the, the idea of making sure that a system is always uh, has all these protections against uh, corruption, you're just, I mean, we're just, there's always good people who want to take advantage of the system that's beneficial to them. And so I say, let's just assume that it will occur. Assume that it will occur, it'll occur a little bit further out. And in the meantime, build tools to, uh, to start a new, a, new, a, you know, a new system afterwards. That's what I'd like to say. All right, TiVo. So, yeah, so many topics in between of the fire starter, Philip, which is um, um, radical questioning. And like, I understand the problem of like, how do you explain it to a person who is outside of a blockchain and you explain, hey, don't trust governance, 
here is much better solution for ADA. What is ADA? Why well, it's a cryptocurrency? It's proof. It's a, it's all good. And like this is a very radical change. And then you will have once you get somebody to talk about it, and when he really wants to prove the point that yeah, but it's still not safe. It it is possible to do that. So it's very hard to fight from that angle. So I like the way Nick started with like how do we make the maybe not make taking words but make the economy or the ecosystem very healthy uh, and uh, I, I don't know maybe i'm i don't see but I, I think the education is the only chance to get there and this it, iterating thing we are doing we are educating ourselves and i don't think any any of us is experts there even the catalyst team themselves or the iog I, I think they're all they have smart people they have the templates and they have thought really deep how to do it but i think even they are experimenting with all of this and they are not experts here uh, as as much as we are and we, we live and learn how do we should govern or how how do we how do we even educate to govern ourselves and and the self governance of self governance of that and um, one thing uh, pointing out what Ken said and uh, that what if we could have an overarching system which has all of these capabilities that we can flip and change and oh we need this voting system okay snap a finger let's vote majority vote here the quadratic vote here and and the, everything behind the scenes magically updates I think this is also quite some experience what I don't want to see anytime soon and I like it simple as it right now I know it's the system is stays the same quite mostly and this step by step sli slightly changes because if we have this huge opportunity for everybody to fiddle fiddle with all of the possible parameters we have in this ecosystem then I think we won't I think it's very hard to find the alignment in that. So I'd rather do one product or one service at the time with the best possible knowledge, with the best thing we think it will fit for that moment. And and like pull from step by step from that uh, instead, instead of trying to pull like a crazy crazy system <laughs> but that, that's just my opinion right. thanks Devo. uh vincent you have your hand up and then we'll go to dean yeah so i was just curious about so i think a, a, it's a lot of really great ideas um it might be fun to have a way to replay the votes under different Emas, right? So, I mean, no matter how you count the votes, we still have effectively like wallets and ADA. We, we still have the same amount of information going into each vote, unless we do like ranked or quadratic or something weird like that. Um, but I think it might be fun to, in, a, in an anonymized way if possible, replay a vote and see, see, I don't know, if, if, if we change certain things, if we try these different systems, what might that change as far as which proposals get picked? You know, I think that that might be cool. Um, I don't know, just, just a, a playground of sorts to actually take the real voting data um, and the real proposals, because those are the effectively public. I mean, your commander, I don't know how public that is, but um, just to put them in a place where people that want to, to, to more intensely study voting behavior and outcomes and, and overlaying new systems might be able to do that. Um, that's it, I was just thinking about it. It'd be cool to have access to that data in a really clean way um, in one nice package so that the DS folks like me can go in and take ideas from the community and say, okay, if we did this, we would have gotten these proposals instead. And then we'd also have like the VCA reviews and stuff like that. So we can actually see like if we tried to optimize for uh, higher VCA score or higher, higher CA assessment scores, or higher impact scores, 
or more variety in in terms of uh, proposer uh, name ethnicity expectation or something you know there's, there's just there's tons of fun stuff you can do um, I don't know it just might be cool to, to play with that just quickly um, the pace and myself do want to make all of those data available at an API so who knows you might at least get the raw data one of these so we have a proposal for that in this round to get out of that proposal data in a structure API and available to the community. That's a cool idea. Yeah, there's, there's still a lot of chats with Marek and IOG with that. We've still got plenty to um, iron out to make this symbiotic relationship for sorting out data. But that is that is coming. We're pushing for it. Awesome. All right, Dean, you have your hand up and then we'll go to, or yeah, and then Jonathan. Yes, um, before I begin, let me explain this is my second town hall meeting. And um, I've been I've known about Catalyst Nata for about three months now. And it's it's brilliant as to what's going on. That said, I'm also wanting to just share my background was back in the 90s in moving forward Linux when open source is not what it is now, what it was back then. The company that I was working for was the company that sued Microsoft in order to get DOS, MS-DOS monopoly, monopoly off the marketplace in order for Linux to start being installed on different types of hardware. And what I'm finding out is when I attended the summit, there was some very interesting similarities. Things that I found um, extremely interesting as if um, going through the exact same process. So. Back then, open source was a really, really bad word. Um, back then, if you bet your career on open source, you were giving everything up because no one understood or cared about open source. In fact, we had to have a trade show um, literally where we had uh, Linus Torvald says, hi, my name is Linus Torvald and I pronounce Linux, Linux. We still call it Linux, but he literally, we had to educate the market. Some things that I've that I've watched and seen said here is very much the similar thing. Nick, Tom, what you were saying and what's being said here and now was the very same things we were facing back then when we were trying to figure out how in the world do you communicate to people the value of open source, right? We were basically talking about why open source would become a huge business model and our nemesis was Microsoft. And the reason I'm giving all this background is to hear these conversations and to hear some things that are going on is very similar. What we came to find out very quickly back then, and it was very painful, was it was based upon the innovation of value. Innovation of value was what would drive the market to be accepted when people began to understand the connections between how the value was being brought forward it was like once someone saw the connection and the connectivity, it was the light would go on. They would begin to create their own visions of how they could start utilizing the structures. So now leap forward me th three months, I've been in doing things in open source rights management and all that stuff. I'm somewhat technical, but, but I am very much a business side person. I'm the guy that can connect business. And I'm trying to reach out to find out how can I help <laughs> with Cardano. It is brilliant. I, there's nothing that I can do. There's nothing that I can do to say, here's, I can put this catalyst together, but I can certainly help third other people know how to get their products across what would be called the chasm, that product acceptance model, that structure that basically says, we're not creating technology for the sake of creating technology. We're enabling value and innovation as we continue to move down that line. I'm not sure about how voting works inside. I'm still trying to figure that out. But what I can say is this, all of the emerging technologies, everything we're dealing with requires people who understand how to move from the technology structure into the value added environments. They want to see this. I'm. I'm willing to help whomever I can who's willing to reach out and say, hey, can you 
kind of help. I took a look at wanting to be a CA, but that's all technical side of things. So I reached out to a number of people saying, how can I help to bring along? There are people like myself, mentors that have been there and done that, <laughs> who want to come and say, how do I help you on the business side? How do you take your technical terms and move that into that environment? And that comes with the creation of value and the vision of value. And um, this is deja vu all over again for me. You can substitute Microsoft's name in with Facebook, Amazon, and Google all over again. Take a look at the exact same lawsuits. Take a look at the exact same things and look back and go back in 1990, in the 90s. And the reason I'm bringing this all up is there are some <laughs> who would just love to help take some of, some of the things I saw in these last two town halls are phenomenal pieces of technology and are phenomenal pieces of opportunity. The real vision comes when the value gets created and it gets connected. And the things that Nick was saying and Tom, we had the exact same conversations. And I will tell you, there was a point in time when we basically said, do we stop delivering Linux? Because Linux open source could be utilized as a bad thing. We had to make a hard decision. And then we realized this, those who will create the value and those that will help extend the value will always innovate towards goodness. They will do that. And so again, there are things that I see in the marketplace. I'm not sure about voting. I own ADA. I've, I've examined all, I, I've examined the various ecosystems out there. Cardano by far is the best. There is no question about it, none. And the marketplace will help make the decisions as we begin to understand the value. Now, just from a personal plea on my side, <laughs> I would love to figure out how to help. I may not be able to build technology, but I was one of a person who was figuring out refresh hertz rates on monitors and blowing out monitors when Linux was brand new. There are other people who want to come in and help that way. So I don't know how to solve the concept of voting. I do know that this, when people begin to see the value of vision, that's when they begin to add to that value of vision and they begin to define that. Thanks. Nice. Thanks, Thanks Dane. Dean. It's great to have you here. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of people in the community that would love to connect, like Chris Baird is starting uh, Catalyst Boost, which is a mentorship project, which wow. you may be really highly qualified for, um, and all sorts of other people here, I'm sure, are really interested in connecting. So it's good to see you here at Town Hall. And it's, Dean. It's, it's, it's incredible. It's like, finally, what, we, what was started has a real shot of truly emerging and not being not being killed by organizations that want to control it by money. And sorry for the passion, but back then you bet everything. Now we have an opportunity, some of us to see it actually mature and succeed. And this is incredible. And, and Dean, when you're brave enough, maybe drop your email address in the live chat. Just have a look what will come to you. I think there are a lot of nice people here would, who would love to stay in contact with you. Absolutely, I'll add that. Thank you. Thanks for, let, thanks for letting me ramble. Thanks for being here. Yeah, definitely, thank you. Uh, Jonathan, you're next. And then we'll hear from Pop-Tart Salads. Yeah, that was, that was phenomenal, Dean. Thank you for being here. Um, I've been around for months now and Everything you've said is all the emotions I've felt <laughs> in repeated occasions throughout the time in, in this community. Um, it's amazing. And uh, yeah, I love Linux. So thank you for anything you contributed in that regard. Uh, and yeah, open source movement um, is just phenomenal. So if we can replicate any of the aspects of you know, the success of Wikipedia even, or um, you know some of these large projects that haven't been from a fiscal, pure fiscal back um, agenda, then I, you know, I really promote that. Thank you. Um, 
so anyway i was i was listening to conversations and, and thinking about um what i would like to see um and probably going back to what george was saying is different voting types for different scenarios so we haven't got a single um solution for every every problem so you know things in the community that need deciding on are very varied in terms of their um their makeup whether they are um purely directional or uh moral or um ethical or um you know fiscal they're, they've all got different aspects and so we should have different tools for those things because if you have a, a single solution for it all then there are always people who won't be engaged with that type of vote um so if we can and, and really i think my drive is if we can get things more granular and and smaller and decision making being made by um people who are infused in the areas that they're working in and you know are investing their time, their energies, and they uh, and their good intentions in areas that they are. Um, you know, then we play to getting experts to be really in, involved in making decisions around things that require expert um, decision making. Um, and yet, our big moral decisions, just like Nick was saying, the the environment that we're creating, and and you, Dean, as well, the environment we've created is really healthy. It's really rich soil, um, and so it's very easy for us to see and try and make. Um, direction changes now, but it's only going to, going to become much harder as we go with time, like Philip was saying. But we've got if we can if we can get a granular, you know, granular solution in place now that um, wherever we can, we can be dissipating and spreading the influence outwards, bottom up rather than top down. I think that's um, the right way to go about it for 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 us. Um, and yeah, the the least the last thing I want to see is everything being decided on by marketing, which is kind of what the rest of the, the political and um, you know, economic realm is decided on. And you know, that, doesn't, that doesn't get the, the geniuses in front of the cameras very often. Um, so uh, yeah, I like it to be impossible wherever possible. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, Pop-Tart salads, you're up if you're... Still wanting to say these are Derek. Derek. <laughs> I thought it was Derek. Yeah. <laughs> um, hello, everyone. Thank you. Uh, it was nice to see you. Um, in regards to the uh, the hiring, it's great that IOG is growing, and we're excited about that. I think some of the things that I'm hearing and we've been hearing is you know a desire to be more integrated and open communications with uh, IOG and CF. <clears throat> Is there a way to start to consider um, some of these, uh, the hiring, onboarding, being outsourced to people in Catalyst, or is there a way to find a, uh, um, you know, a, a group of people in Catalyst that could take on some of that stuff to begin exploring this, this really dynamic relationship of uh, the, the corporate versus uh, the corporate and open community blending mechanism. I mean, it's a, it's a bizarre dynamic. So it's just, whatever the answer is, it, just see if there's something to think about with it. Cause I don't know if many people have done it. So it'd be cool to see. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Uh, Nick, you're up next, followed by Ken. Yeah, like, um, yeah, what Dean shared, I mean, I think uh, the reality is, is, is our biggest investment, like our biggest asset is really the human capital that's involved. And the investment we put into making that human capital work uh, in order to be the most innovative environment and like sustain that environment, because the technology is going to change over time. And I've just been a part of yeah many startups and and consulted many startups that had superior technology but really lost out because they didn't they weren't able to connect properly with their clients or they weren't able to nurture long lasting innovative environment um, yeah all that kind of other stuff that people have talked about you know this old system comes in and starts cracking down and then um, it, it really just just starts to disconnect the people. Um, 
And so I really think that, yeah, governance, again, we jumped to voting, but governance really is about like, how do we nurture each person to help them go into their genius zone? And then, and then, like I said, when conflict arises, we move them through. Um, and there's a ton of research around that. Um, and if nobody's ever, if you haven't read about, you know, archetypes, it's the number one thing since 2015 that inter from international corporations all the way down to entrepreneurs are doing in order to connect better with their clients and tell that story, like Dean was saying, those are the bridge builders who are bringing value to their clients in a language and a wording they can understand, and not just like language as English, but in a story, in a way that's relatable to them. Because I keep running into person after person after person um, who, who, yeah, like wants to get involved right now, and they're smashing up the current technology or the current platforms being used to get involved but they love this idea because they see the potential that cardano has to be able to really bring out this you know a self-governance this open source um this financial freedom in order for us to create this world that we want to live in and i think before we even get into like yeah finalizing the details on the voting and all that kind of stuff, we have to talk about like, how are we nurturing innovation and how are we bringing in stakeholders that aren't currently involved right now? Because I think we're still, we have to admit that we're still a very niche market of, you know, crypto and tech people on the current platforms and things have been working well for them. But, you know, there's that point in startups when now you want to start gaining, you know, more mass scale adoption or more people, but then, that's when that like trough of disillusionment can really come in if it's not if it's not nurtured properly <clears throat> and there and just like we, we built the blockchain we did a ton of research on it because there is research out there so yes there's going to be some experiments um uh but at the same time like we need to we need to build our human and nurture our human capital just like we did the blockchain because um, there's there's enough research out there that shows how to bring people together how to represent communities make sure that um, all the right stakeholders are involved in the beginning and that's my big fear is that like we're going to start to do this go you know release this governance but it's still not going to involve all the stakeholders and so that ship's going to be going a little bit sideways until we really have that in place. Um, and so that's, I, I hope that in the governance talks that come forward and in this cafe coming up and things like that, that we, in the idea of governance, we hit on more of the topics that Tamara, uh, you know, talked about that Dr. Mihela talks about, because those are the things that are really going to nurture, uh, again, not not just iterative processes, but the emerging innovation stuff that we can imagine right through if you have the right environment. And that's um, Veda in the we work through conflict, way we get people to the genius zone really quickly on the right projects in the right places, that will be the ultimate driver of our success. And I, and I would like to say the ultimate uh, capital that we can maintain. Yes. Thanks, Nick. Um, there is a comment in chat. Um, would you be able to share links to some of that research and to your proposal as well if people want to follow up? Yeah, yes. I'll put it uh, one more time um, on my, yeah, I'll, I'll share my idea scale project and then there's a ton of research in there. It talks a lot about this in there. Um, and then I'll put my email in there too if anybody wants to email me personally. Um, again, I'm here for this governance community. Um, I just know that having built community, like it's the interpersonal dynamics where things start to go sideways real fast. And if you don't have the skilled people, and luckily they're out there, uh, if you don't have that skilled people in that right, right environment, then it kind of blows up instead of actually coming together into something new. All right. Thanks, Nick. Uh, Ken, you have your hand. Um, see, I was going to say, like, we, we, as we were talking about like having a multiple different, different systems for, for voting, like something that, that Tivo mentioned about making things simple. I think that you can, 
consider it from any individual contributor from their perspective. You want to make things simple for the for the the one who's interacting with the community, whether it's through voting or whether it's through some other form of engagement, um, teaching or or building up an idea or or whatever. You want to make things simple from the the user's perspective, but also allow for for different types of experiments to be going on at the same time because if as the system grows like if we do get to a billion plus people interacting with with cardano then it's it's not going to be something that you can track and and manage as one as one thing by itself without structuring it in a way that's that has the ability to adapt to different situations in different places. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ken. All right. Um, we've kind of worked our way through the raised hand queue. Um, and this was actually intended to be talking about Cafe Sur Le Pont and kind of answering questions about the event itself. And it's kind of impromptu turned into a mini event of itself. So that's really amazing because I think there's a lot of passion and uh, interest in this topic. And it was nice to have multiple members of I IO here as well as the community so that we could kick this off. So I think we're gonna have a, a trial video here to actually create a one pager <laughs> based on the outcomes and what was discussed because I think there was a lot of valuable stuff here. So yeah, thanks everybody. Um, and we are getting on close to, I think, an hour now. So I don't know if it, anybody has anything else they want to bring up. We can continue. Um, or we can call it here and um, look forward to having a, the official launch on October 16th. Robert will say uh, Robert. Yeah, Robert. Yeah, Robert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> I've been keeping quiet. Hope, hopefully my audio is working okay because it was, it's was it been a bit choppy. Uh, oh, that's good. Um, I'm going to keep this really short because my throat is sore. Obviously, I was talking too much last night. Uh, there's, so there's been a lot of discussion about voting in this, and I've just sort of been listening away. First of all, there's a heck of a lot of research. I see someone in the comments talked about um, there's a millennia of research into voting, and that is very true. The area that it's called is social choice, um, and there's a heck of a lot of different things. So within um, Catalyst at the moment, we're using approval, approval voting, which unfortunately is one of the worst ones we could possibly have, but it's uh, the best uh, sort of approach for the moment, and that's good. Um, so, uh, and but what I haven't heard in the discussion is that um, uh, there's actually another form of revealing preferences. Um, so voting itself is just one form of revealing preferences. Before you even get to voting, you do, as we've talked about, or Nick's talked about, I think, is that uh, governance is far more than just voting. It's about actually trying to form consensus. In fact, if you've reached need to use uh, voting, you've probably actually failed at governance in many respects uh, because you haven't managed to build a consensus. Right. Uh, the other tool really for um, revealing preferences is the pricing system, the market. And one of the key things here is that um, we've actually got an accounting layer that works on, a bookkeeping layer that works on a global scale. And so we can actually use different types of market mechanisms to reveal preferences for small groups, which we can trust. So this falls into the camp of things like reputation, identity, and a whole lot of other different things can actually be facilitated through market-based mechanisms. Uh, not your DeFi, DeFi token flipping type of situation, but easily we can represent a lot of things about um, the state of a community through tokens of some form or another, and you can establish different sort of rules around that. Um, one of the things that 
uh, I'll just go back to in terms of what uh, Dean was largely talking about. This is a, my opinion on, on certain things, and certainly I was around with the, all the open source days and uh, Microsoft trying to label everyone that did any sort of open source communists and various, the red threat was uh, resurgent and all that sort of stuff. Um, and now they fully embrace it, which is, you know. <laughs> um, but within economics, there's basically four quadrants of uh, types of goods that we are typically dealing with. And most of uh, what we've grown up and known about is what's called private goods. So things like um, Linux or any of the open source stuff was actually more in the camp of what are called common and public goods. And the key distinction between private goods and say common or public goods is that you can't exclude people from them. Um, to me, a lot of the blockchain space is about trying to bring back the common resources and the public goods. That's what it's largely about. Um, but that does not mean we have to throw out things that are typically work quite well for private goods, which is the market system. So I'd argue there. Um, and just to really make it short, because I am trying to, um, I would encourage everyone to do a bit of digging into the work of Alana Ostrom. If you're not familiar with her, look at her. Go and look at her work. Uh, she has, been, when she um, had spent 40 years looking at how to govern natural resources, and a lot of that work was then subsequently extended into how do you govern um, knowledge commons as well. And essentially, she's got eight primary design patterns that everyone needs to sort of look at and really kind of understand. And one of those, I'll, I'll just quickly run through those. One, uh, a commons has to have a clearly defined boundary, okay? Any sort of system has to have a boundary. Uh, rules should situate uh, uh, in sort of local uh, context. So a lot of the decisions here around local context was brought up. Uh, participation is really vital for those rules within that local uh, context to enable the group to define and, and uh, represent its own rules. Commons must be monitored. So a lot of the discussion that we've come up is how do you account and report for things. Uh, there has to be easy sort of conflict situations coming through. Uh, and um, there's also the idea of polycentric networks. This is the idea that uh, you have different centers of power, different centers of value, and that they uh, nest or interrelate with each other, okay? Um, and that sort of thinking, one way to think about uh, a lot of her work is the idea that you can actually bring market-based systems closer to, to the social choice system. Okay, that's the key thing. So kind of meeting in the middle. The key distinction between um, a market system and a social choice system is the fact that uh, social choice didn't have the pricing function. That's the key thing. So what you're trying to do is bring the two together. So don't throw out voting or what it means to be governance. There's a huge amount of work. Uh, the nice thing is we can actually experiment with a lot of different voting systems beyond just approval voting. Okay, and there is a lot going on. Um, but equally, we can also bring uh, pricing, the pricing function closer to revealing those sort of preferences. The two work hand in hand. And we've got a tool that enables us to bring them together on a global scale. And that was longer than I intended. Sorry. <laughs> Amazing. I think there is a lot of interest in that topic. So if you have any links or anything to share in chat, I'm sure a lot of people would love to, to read more. All right, Simon, you have your hand up. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I really want to highlight something that I found in the Catalyst School Discord server from Stephen. And uh, because uh, I think the, the, the main question for this format is how, how we can transition the power from IOG to the community or like how, how does how does this how does the community work together with IOG and, and I feel, feel like what, what he said was very uh, very interesting 
So um, I'm going to just you know, post the link here if anyone wants to read it. Uh, I think I, I should. I, I, I'm not sure. Sh should I just read it, or are you gonna uh, like read Go it out? Or are you gonna read it on uh, on your own? What you Go say? read it. I read that. All oh, right. What what is what is lacking in my view is any real sense of IoT stuff and community members working together on day to day projects and deliverables, not going away and coming back with ready made ideas and proposals. This may take some professionals out of their comfort zone as we move to a situation where community members, amateurs, must participate in all Cardano deliverables in actual working meetings, not as an afterthought or a community consult consultation. Circle has introduced the possibility of this, but it needs to be expanded upon. Perhaps there needs to be less concern about ownership of tasks uh, e.g. IOG does this, the community does this, and more focus on collaborative delivery, e.g. Who, who from IOG and the community can work on this. There has also been a long-standing difference of circumstances between paid IOG staff and unpaid community, which undermines the possibility of ownership and creates a sustainability risk. Once some of our funding and resource initiatives are in place. Hopefully, there can be a leveling effect as the community are paid for the contribution. Um, yeah, I hope that was as interesting to you as it was to me. <laughs> I think I can hand over to Harris now. Simon, which um, Discord server was that on? Sorry, the link is on a server I don't think I have access to. The school. DA school. DA cool. school. Not CA school, Catalyst. <laughs> Not CA school. Oh, Catalyst. <laughs> Catalyst. Yeah, you even wrote it in um, <laughs> circles that everybody's okay. Even I said Victor seeing it. Yes, uh, so yeah, it's definitely been a really great, great discussion. Um, really great points of view. You know, I certainly have lived through a few different waves of technology uh, along with you, Dean. Um, you know, I've definitely seen the changes and you know, that, that's what really inspired me into this movement um, you know, is to really see the, how this can change the future, how it can fix a lot of the, the broken systems that are out there. Um, we do have the challenge that you know, governance is hard. Uh, it, it's not easy. There is no perfect governance, right? But as a community, we get to sort of reinvent what governance should be, right? And, and take these great ideas and, and leverage all the opinions uh, from lots of different places around the world uh, to try to inform that. So I'm, I'm just thrilled to be, to be part of that along with you folks. Um, so at, at IOG, uh, you know, the thing that I've run into is there's so many people that have come from the community that become part of IOG. So I'm really, uh, and, and part of that path, but a lot of the, the people, you know, many, many people that you've seen through, through Catalyst have been on that, that path as well. And so I think there can be some opportunities uh, for more and more to sort of join. I think, you know, the idea of Catalyst is to fund great ideas and find ways to take people from being observers to participants to actually being active in the community to make this your full-time job. And that's one of the metrics that we see as success. Uh, if we can cause an impact and, and create change along the way and build the ecosystem. So I'm really excited to try to bring tools together um, as much as possible. And I, I'm a huge data fan um, and you know, I'm digging into to data sources. I want to make data available. I want to make APIs available to empower the community to continue to build the amazing tools that I've already seen being built, you know, uh, through this process. And so uh, I'm definitely encouraged. And so I, I'm happy to post my contact information, um, but I'm really looking to engage and reach out 
to community members and, and see where I can be of value and, and help. Um, it's great to listen to all of the amazing opinions uh, and, and thoughts. And, you know, I think we're well underway of, you know, supporting this, this movement uh, from the community. And, and uh, you know, our, our goal is to hand off, you know, the reins of, uh, of driving, you know, the direction of, of the future on the Cardano platform to the community from IOG. So uh, I'm excited to be a part of that. So that's some of uh, what I'll offer today. And then I'll, I'll have more details and I'll be sharing, sharing more as we, we, we develop and I'll probably create some other channels where we can have more, uh, more community uh, communications and, and involvement. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Harris. Uh, Johnny, you're next. Let me see. I'm going to share my screen real quick just because, um, to Simon's point, I've been thinking very much about um, some of those points that you're talking about, which is it's, um, and I came up with a kind of a way to kind of organize my thoughts, right? And so you have the Cardano platform or protocol open public permissionless um, and you have things that I consider development of Cardano um, and so these are things that you might associate with IOG today um, but there's nothing that says it has to be IOG right so IOG is maybe a steward a shepherd of this activities or has the capabilities and the know-how um, but really you know if we imagine some point in time in the future where it's everything's being led and done by the community, then IOG might be one of those community members, core contributors, maintainers of that ecosystem. But I, these are things that I think of as core development, running and maintaining uh, the platform, break fix, managing documentation, quality assurance, release management, et cetera. And then on the right side, uh, I have this idea of development on Cardano, right? And so you have things like commercial projects, de building dApps, DeFi, NFT marketplaces, gaming, telecom, connect to, connecting the unconnected, banking the unbanked, tools and libraries. And you notice that Catalyst is very much uh, ever present in each of those areas. Um, and then you have notions of the ecosystem. So this isn't necessarily just the platform or the protocol, but also the broader ecosystem. And so this is where we think of things like alliances and partnerships, adoption, outreach, um, and also maybe working and influencing the regulatory landscape. Um, and so, you know, these are things where you're working with people who can get fired or voted out of office if they choose to deploy on Cardano. And so they're going to have a maybe slightly different perspective, but nonetheless, they're a part of our community. And then underneath all of that, you have this notion of governance of the platform, right? So these are the hard problems of blockchain governance, right? And these are the things around Genesis keys, hard fork combinators, protocol parameters, use of treasury, voting, CIP. And again, you see catalysts all over this place, right? But, you know, this isn't, this is just a way for me to kind of capture some of my thoughts and do your points, Simon. Um, you know, I think that as we start to decompose what it takes to live and participate in and to run and maintain and sustain this ecosystem, eventually all of this is community driven. This whole circle, everything you see on here, right? It's not just Cardano Foundation. And you know maybe they have a role as stewards to get us to a certain point, but they can only, they're only gonna get us so far beyond which point it's all gonna be community driven. So hopefully that's some helpful perspective about my current thinking on this. Thank you, Johnny. Thanks for sharing that. That's great to see your thoughts there. Uh, I, uh, I didn't make, make it to the screenshot button. Uh, can you <laughs> show it again or share the slide? I don't see any reason why not. It was a very nice uh, map. 
and it's not meant to be complete or perfect or anything. It's just, uh, I'm a very visual thinker. And so I have to kind of put it down and, and it helps me frame the dialogue and the conversations that I have with other people. And it's actually something that I'm very much focused on and involved in and driving in my current role at IOG, so. Awesome, thanks, Johnny. Um, and this is being recorded, so if you missed it and want to screenshot it later, you can take a look at the recording. Um, Dean, your hand is up. Yes. First of all, thank you, Johnny, for sharing, sharing that. That helped out a tremendous amount because it, it helps see the, a, a much larger global vision. One thing that I would share um, as, as this continues to move forward, um, one of the things that Cardano and the opportunity is this concept about this root of trust. And one of the things that we had to face is, and we didn't move in my opinion soon enough. And this was part of my responsibility at the company I was working with Caldera was getting to the channel that understood how to influence the markets. Um, many of what we now know as MSPs did not exist at the time when open source started. In fact, they were called AS, an ASP mark called application service providers were there and they were trying to figure out how to transition into this marketplace, um, moving from, I can buy the product from a distributor and stuff. One of the things that is happening right now is there are certain channel models that are just they're literally dying and not knowing where to go and what to do. And when I take a look at the video over the screen that you put up, that structure will become really, really important to those organizations, those channel partners. They have, most of the channel partners now are either on the Microsoft side or they're on the open source side. But for the first time in the history in the industry, there's been a shift in the way the channel goes to market and what they're doing right now. And so there's a significant opportunity as we move forward, I believe as Cardano moves forward is helping those channel organizations begin to understand how they can participate and be involved. Because that one screen, Johnny, that you just brought up, a lot of lights just clicked and there are people that are wanting to see it and understand and know that not just at how they can participate on the technological side and bringing services to the marketplace, but how can they extend the infrastructure to the very thing that Cardano can um, provide. So thank you. All right, great. Thanks, Dean. And thanks, Johnny. That was uh, a really great visualization of those things. Um, all right. Is there anything else people want to bring up today? We naturally winding down. Any closing thoughts, Felix? It's a beautiful evolution again, I think. Just really happy to see how different people from different groups coming together, starting to communicate. And I just thanks to everyone. I'm still impressed by the diversity and the respect of each other from this community. Mm -hmm. For sure. Amazing I echo what those happens. Thoughts. It, it, it's amazing what happens when you open a room to people across the world. This is absolutely fabulous. Thank you. All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming and participating today. Um, we weren't quite sure what to expect. We were just kind of introducing the room and willing to answer questions and it kind of evolved into something pretty amazing. So thanks everybody. Um, and we will definitely provide this recording if you want to watch it later or cut, catch snippets of it. Um, and we will attempt to transcribe and um, timestamp it so that you can jump to the interesting bits that you're interested in. 
So yeah, thanks everybody for coming today. And, uh, and we'll kick it off for real on the 16th, but this seems to be version zero. Uh, we kind of kicked it off today. And short shout out to Mike. I had a call with him last week. I called him and said, hey, Mike, how would, uh, what do you think? How could an event like this look like? And then in this conversation came up with some really nice ideas. So thanks again, Mike, like always. <laughs> thanks, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everyone. All right. Great to see Thanks everyone. Everybody. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care. Bye bye, see everyone. You. Thanks. Thanks for hosting, Nori. Have bye. Welcome. Have a great day. Bye. Ciao. All right. Awesome.